Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Red mid-range deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck is highlighted by a new addition from the latest anthology expansion, A Call Against Command, a 3-mana instant that lets us choose two modes between returning a creature from our graveyard to our hand, target player discards a card, we can destroy an artifact or deal 2 damage to any target, and we can even make the opponent discard at instant speed, so if the opponent is stop decking we can still put a stop on their draw step, make them draw a card for the turn and make them discard before they can cast any sorcery speed spells. So Colligan's Command, a very versatile card, and we're playing the full playset here to try it out. Now unlike some other black-red mid-range decks in a historic, we're not playing with the Stitcher Supplier Village Rights package with Claim the Firstborn, instead opting for more interaction, and then we've got Faithless Looting as a way to fill the graveyard and enable some of those synergies as well. Another maybe interesting addition is the full playset of Cling to Dust, giving us some graveyard interaction, great against Mizzix's Mastery as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, some of our key creatures here, at 2 mana, Dreadhorde Arcanist, a 1-3 Trampler, that when it attacks lets us cast an instant or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to the Arcanist's power from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, and then exile it afterwards, and there's no shortage of 1 mana spells we can get back with our Arcanist. Then we also have the full playset of Young Pyromancer, a 2 mana 2 1, that whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we get to make a 1 1 a red elemental creature token, so this helps us build up a nice board presence, and then we can use those tokens to trade off for poison creatures or eventually swarm the opponent. Would be nice alongside village rights as well, but the tokens are still very useful without that sacrifice engine. Then we also have the full playset of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, which is great alongside Colligan's Command and our other discard effects to attack the opponent's hand. As the 6 6 Elder Giant, when it enters a battlefield, we have to sacrifice unless it escaped. And when Croxa enters a battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card, and then each opponent who didn't discard a non land card this way loses 3 life and can escape it out of the graveyard for 4 mana by exiling 5 other cards from our graveyard. And then we get access to that nice entered battlefield ability, and if Croxa sticks around, will quickly empty the opponent's hand and deal a ton of damage. And then we also have Lurus of the Dream Den as our companion, which can get back all these various 2-mana creatures that can provide a ton of value over time. And then Colagan's Command also a way for us to potentially get back Lurus from the graveyard, so we've got a very nice recursive engine going on. Then taking a look at some of our 1-mana interaction, we have 6 discard spells with the full playset of Thoughtseize and 2 copies of Inquisition of Kozilek. Then we've got some cheap removal with a full playset of Fatal Push, which we have the two copies of Fabled Passage as nice ways to enable Revolt, and the elemental tokens from Young Pyromancer are also good ways to enable it. And then we also have two copies of Bloodsheaf's Thirst, which we can kick to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. And then as we mentioned, four copies of Cling to Dust, which also gains a bit of life to offset cards like Thoughtseize and our Castle Lochthwain. And then the full place of the Faceless Looting, very useful in a best of one situation, since you don't always know which decks you're going to be facing. Sometimes your Hand Disruption in the late game is a dead card, so we can easily discard those, discard extra lands we don't need. And sometimes you face a control deck where cards like Fatal Push aren't very useful, so you can discard those as well. And then looting helps us dig through the deck to find a relevant interaction for the matchup. And then our goal is pretty much to empty the opponent's hand, trade a bunch of resources, and hopefully we're the last ones standing, making use of cards like Croxa to end the game. And then the mana base includes one of each castle, with Castle Lochthwain drawing us extra cards, and Castle Emberth especially nice if we make a bunch of tokens with the Young Pyromancer. Then we've got four of each basic land, alongside two copies of Fabled Passage, can also put an extra land in the graveyard to make it easier to escape cards like Croxa and Cling to Dust. And then we've got a bunch of red-black dual lands with the Dragon Skull Summit, Blood Crypt, and the Black-Red Pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got some creature interaction, hand disruption, and Croxa to take over the late game. So it looks like Elf Tribal, not a great matchup, although if we can keep cards like Realmwalker and Warmaster in check, it becomes a lot more manageable. So, probably gonna end up killing turn 1 Elf. Another approach is to let them keep the Lanor Elves and just deal with kind of the bigger engine cards like Realmwalker, Warmaster. Which I think makes sense here, especially since they have double elves. So we'll take probably the Realmwalker. 
since that one can be awkward to answer with a thirst. And looting's okay too. Kind of like just playing Croxa. And then next turn they might go Warmaster into another Elves. I can thirst to Warmaster. Or I could thirst and looting now. And then next turn try and kill the Warmaster, although they might just play another Elves. So let's go with Croxa. Wouldn't be able to double Thirst next turn since we don't have double black. Put on discarded in Elves, that's fine. That goes for Marwyn, that makes sense too. Well, we do have a way to enable Revolt now. With the Fabled Passage, so that's a way to kill Marwyn. And then I don't really need to looting since all my cards in hand are good. So I'll probably wait on it. Now a card we don't want to see is Collected Company, since that's essentially a two-for-one. But we're slowly filling the graveyard for Croxa. And the board is still not out of hand. Right, Warmaster I'll happily take out. And then we'll put Lurus in hand here. Alternatively, we can looting to be guaranteed an escaped Crocs on next turn. Which is also appealing since it applies the most immediate pressure. Arcanist is a good one, so I can discard the two 1-mana spells, play Arcanist for the turn. And we still leave a few cards in there to replay with Arcanist. Alright, so that was a good sequence. One's got two unknown cards in hand. Although we can make them discard one with Croxa before we attack. And it looks like it's probably a collected company. So I don't have to attack with Arcanists. So let's exile some cards. And then keep Thirsts and Looting. Seems okay. Company response. Finds double Arch Druid. That is scary. And her opponent had the Planeswalker in hand. Alright, so... If I attack with Arcanist, I can kill an Elves. Is that worth it? Not necessarily. Opponents got pretty much all the mana they want anyway. And then next turn I can maybe cast a Thirst, killing an Arch Druid, which will set up a better attack. And I'll keep land in hand to maybe discard to a flashback looting. So don't want to see company. Warmaster is actually annoying too, since they can activate the ability. So that was one of their better draws. So if I were to attack with Croxa and Arcanist, I can cast Thirst. And at this point I probably have to take out a Warmaster instead of an Archdruid. So maybe we'll flashback looting first. See if we can improve our hand. Fatal Push and Cling, those are both good. Second so attack with Arcanists and Croxa. Flashback the Thirst on Warmaster. Some traits will happen and then we can Fatal Push an Arch Druid, second main. Seems acceptable. Could also push the elves, so that way they don't get to trade here. Yeah, that seems even better. So 
So they get to keep double arch fruits, but they lose the rest. Opponents at 10. Kling can gain life if needed. Just a land to draw and a Paramancer. Alright. So don't have a way to enable Revolt. But I can go Paramancer, Kling to draw cards, make a token. And then we can replay Kling with Arcanist if we want. Since they're probably forced to block Croxa. Fail push is not going to do it. And draw another card. Yeah, opponent's going to block Arcanist, fall to one. It's going to make it very difficult for them to recover. Don't really see them coming back at one life. Even if they hit the best company ever. Alright, GG's. So we managed to dismantle the elf deck, was still pretty close and needed some lucky removal spells over the top. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a two mana creature and doesn't have a whole lot of interaction. But we do have a looting. And we'll know what we're up against, presumably. I'll try it. Not a great hand, but could easily change in our next couple draws. Knight of the Evil Legion. Alright, so creature removal is good. think I shock myself since I might need to cast two black one drops next turn. Right, one clink can definitely go. Probably just two of them. And then if something bad happens to Arcanist, we can still get it back with Command. Command can also kill a Knight of the Evil Legion. So they might just take the call against Command here. And then hopefully Arcanist sticks around. Right, they took the Arcanist instead, so that removes our play for next turn a little bit. But we can still cling. See if we pick up some one mana interaction. Which we did not. We'll just play a land then. So they could decide to pump the knight so it doesn't die to Colgan's command. Although we can still make him discard and get back Arcanist, which is a fine play. And all our black removal spells can kill the knights no matter how large it is. Arcanist to draw. Yeah, I guess we'll just play Arcanist then. Opponent attacks, we'll take it. And a Bishop of Wings. Okay. Can attack with Arcanists and then probably replay looting. Since we're looking for some removal here. Croxa. Alright, so... Do I still want to keep a thought? See, so we're getting pretty low on life. And I can play Croxa to make him discard one. Although I could empty out their entire hands. So I probably still keep Thoughtseize, so discard two lands. And then we want a Thoughtseize first, because if they have a land and a spell, this way we can take both. Alright, double Resplendent Angel would have been scary. So opponent with an interesting black-white angel deck with knight. So they probably have a veto in there. So right now knight is kind of the only threat we need to worry about. Opponent empties their hands. Alright, so... I can escape Croxa. 
If they pump this, goes up to a 6, 7 death touch. If they draw land, they can pump it twice. So there is an argument for escaping Kroxa, staying back with Arcanists. That way, can double block the knight, although it's kind of an ugly trade. Or I can attack with Arcanists, play Cling to Dust, see what we draw. And I'll have to exile my own spell if I want to draw a card here. So that's going to make it more difficult to escape Croxa later. I think escape Croxa and stay on defense is still viable and just hope they don't draw a land. And then don't need Thoughtseize anymore. Arcanist can go. Opponent attacks, we'll have to double block and Command can get back. Maybe Arcanist here. And a Thought Seize takes Command. Alright, we're top decking, but we have a Lurus as well we can use. So not in terrible shape. Could have hoped they don't draw Scary Angel this turn. So their opponent's not playing green for Collected Company. Can check out her hand with Croxa. And then command in their draw step to make him discard again. Seems fine. They had an Amirius call. And then I can even attack with Lurus to gain three. Could also pump with Castle. It's even better. So no call against commands in their draw step. A righteous Valkyrie we can still attack into. And if they trade for Lurus, I can command it back. So that seems fine. So Castle Embrith putting in some work. So we'll put a stop in their draw step. I think I'm still fine playing out my lands, or maybe I should keep one now. Although we do have Castle Lochthwain, so... Let our opponent draw. And then call against commands, returning Lurus, making the opponent discard. And they were about to play a Retribution, so happy we made them discard it. Inquisition is a dead card, so hopefully we can discard it to a looting eventually. So, yeah, we'll just play Lurus. And play Arcanists. could cast Inquisition just to empty my hands and put an extra card in Graveyard for Croxa. Seems okay. And then I can start using Castle without losing too much life. Can Croxa first to check out if the coast is clear. They had a Thought Seize. Opponent's at 10. Can pump with castle attack. Can escape Croxa. It's probably better. And now a Croxa trigger is lethal. So yeah, very grindy game. I needed every piece of the puzzle here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hands, you know, not amazing, but depending on the matchup, we can look for creature removal or discard spells. Spitter means we want to find creature removal. And Fatal Push will do nicely. 
get that fabled passage out of the way, and then probably still okay discarding an extra land. Turn two Arcanist, turn three Pyromancer fail push maybe. Fine Shino Pyromancer. It's gonna deal a bit of damage here, but we've got the late game covered. Hopefully Arcanist survives, if not. We can decide what to do next, whether it's another Arcanist or Pyromancer Fatal Push, could even call against command. Alright, a Lightning Strike at least made them spend two mana. Inquisition probably better than Fatal Push here. So we'll go Pyromancer Inquisition. Don't have our Dreadhorde Arcanist engine going, but needed the extra blockers here. Double Bone Crusher, Shock, Fervent Champion. Yeah, that's a scary hand. Shock, Fervent Champion lets him have the most efficient turn, but long term probably still going with the Bone Crusher. So if they draw land, they can clear both blockers and hit me for four. Ah, just gonna stomp the Paramancer, and we can trade the 1 1 token. Alright, opponent decides to stay back instead. So. Yeah, Arcanists is likely to survive. Cling to Dusk and gain life. So we're starting to stabilize, slowly but surely. Although Bone Crusher as a 4-3 is a pretty big roadblock. So if we still had Fable Passage to enable Revolt, that would have been useful. Can maybe finish off the Bone Crusher with a Colagans command. And then, given that we're still at 12, I'm okay drawing instead of gaining 3. Another Arcanists. Make that all 4 Arcanists. Say so yeah, I can attack. Replay Inquisition. And then if they block with Bone Crusher, I can finish it off with a Colagans command. And maybe make them discard again. Shock Fervent Champion Torbran is scary. Let's take the shock. Could also use Fatal Push to finish off Bone Crusher after we enabled Revolts with Arcanist dying and then play a backup Arcanist. Is that better? I think so. Because then I have an Arcanist active, which seems important, also gives us a good blocker. I will take two. Alright, so we don't want to see land Torbrain. Alright, Wizard's Lightning kills Arcanists. But now Colgan's commands will make them discard Torbrain. Which is pretty huge as well. So, which creature are we killing? Fervent Champion is my guess. So, two damage, discard. So we're sort of stable, around seven life. And we still have an Arcanist in hand, a few cards to flash back, and a Lurse we can access. Crocs are the draw, so... Arcanist Croxa looks good. Yeah, this game highlighted the importance of Inquisition of Kozilek versus Thoughtseize. If we had a Thoughtseize, we would have been pretty close to dead here. Still have a Cling to Dust that can gain life as well. Opponent runs out Castle Ambreth. Luckily, can still block a spitter profitably. Opponent's gonna put us to three. Trying to maybe burn us out, but we can cast a cling to dusts to prevent that from happening. So escaping Croxa 
and then attacking with Arcanist to replay Kling, I think is the play here. Assuming we have enough cards, we do. And then don't need these lands. A couple Arcanists can go. And uh, I guess another one. So now we have a win condition in play. The board is stable and gaining three is going to put us out of burn range. Just exile any creature. Keep land in hand to maybe discard to looting. Right, opponent's just on the burn plan here. So would love to find another cling to dust. Secure on Arcanist. I think they should have pointed that one upstairs and then hope to top deck another burn spell. But we'll see how that plays out. And then could try and get Lurse online next turn. It's probably going to be too slow to connect with Lifelink before it's relevant. So I'd rather flashback looting and look for something like a Pyromancer. Alright, GG's. And our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a great hand, except for the mana is a little awkward. Can't quite curve out the way we want to, but I'll keep it. And then fetch for Swamp, turn to probably play Arcanist, and then take it from there. If we find a third land, we can maybe turn three, play Pyromancer, cast the Thought Season, and then replay it with Arcanist. Opponent on a Mardu deck. Still want to get Arcanist online as soon as possible. Alright, line is good. So, Pyromancer into Thoughtseize. It's gonna hurt a little bit, but if our opponent's a slower deck, it doesn't matter if we lose a bunch of life. Alright, so it's a Mystic Mastery combo deck. And for now we'll take Thrilling Discovery. And then probably take the Mystic Mastery as well. Don't have to flashback Thoughtseize, but since we have another one, it seems worth it. Make an extra token as well. We'll leave them with a bunch of expensive cards that don't really do much by themselves. This would be a spot where finding a looting to discard Fatal Push and Thirst would be useful. For now... Yeah, don't really see a reason to Thought Seize. Can put Lurse in hand or play another Arcanists. So we're applying a bit of pressure. And then our opponent concedes, yeah. A lot of early hand disruption can be very effective against combo decks. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with the fine hands. Got both creature interaction and hand disruption, so we're good against both creature decks and combo decks. And looks like Knight Tribal. So Thirst, a clean answer for Worthy Knights. So it's either Rally the Ranks or Banalish Marshal. Banalish Marshal's a little tricky to kill. If they play Rally, I wouldn't be able to kill a Knight with a Colgan's Command, for instance, but we can still Thirst it. So I think Banalish Marshal is a pick. Alright, opponent does lead with Rally, so next turn they can go Worthy Knight into Bodyguard to uh, essentially get one trigger from the Worthy Knight, and then I guess protect the Worthy Knight as well. So now we can Croxa.
opponent probably discards a land. And then we can use Kologan's command to kill the bodyguards. Ah, opponent just taps out for Worthy Knight. I guess their land came into play tapped. So now Thirst looks good. And then looting is probably fine too since we're stacking up a few lands we don't need. Another Thoughtseize and Croxa. Probably keep the Thoughtseize and discard the land. And then again Thoughtseize plus Thirst. And a history we definitely want to take. Alright, so we successfully emptied out the opponent's hands and we're ready to escape a Croxa, so all according to plan. A worthy knight of the top is unfortunate. So now the play is probably... Could go for Colligan's commands, kill bodyguard, make him discard in their draw step. Or I can just escape Croxa. Which is probably better at this point. And then leave the looting in there. So we've got a nice 6 6 blocker. Another bodyguard of the top. So I don't know if we're in a position where we can race, since our opponent can easily jump with 1-1s one and then attack back, but now with a Pyromancer we're in business. So I can attack with Croxa. If our opponent tries to double block, we can maybe blow them out with a Colligan's command. Alright, so I can kill a bodyguard. The second mode, I guess, is not very useful since there's no creatures to get back. So we'll just make the opponent discard a card. Still seems worth it to keep Croxa in play. And I guess the bodyguards are both protecting worthy knights, so... They can't even sack a bodyguard to protect the other bodyguard like you can with a selfless savior. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet, so managed to outgrind Red White Knights onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing another Lurus deck. Our hand is, you know, okay. Plenty of interaction, looks like blue-black rogues. Um, I'm happy if they mill me, so we'll thought these. And we'll take a memory lapse, I suppose. Mills a Paramancer, which you can maybe get back with Lurus eventually. And do I want to Thought Seize again? We don't have to. Can Fatal Push plus Cling to Dusts. Seems like a fine turn. Rune Cramp to mill me. So that's going to enable the domination, potentially. Could go after the creature so they can't replay it with Lurus. But uh, just want to draw the extra card. So we can Thought Seize plus Croxa. And then Agadim's Awakening is fine.
opponent keeps Fable Passage to mill me for six. Although the rogue stack usually doesn't win by milling. It's more of a deck that needs a bit of mill to enable its synergies as opposed to using those to get across the finish line. Lurus to hand. And Fatal Push can clean up the crab. We can get our own Lurus going. Or we can save the uh, Fabled Passage Fatal Push combo. And then just put our Lurus in hand. Escaping Crocs are also tempting. So they can replay their 1-1. One, one. All right, so get to kill Lurus before they get value from it, which feels nice. Opponent wanted to mill us for a bit more. And yeah, now we can start escaping Croxa. Which is gonna be quite strong. Just get rid of lands and discard spells we don't need anymore. Still 28 cards remaining, so unlikely to die to mill. Thirsts. They didn't even need to kick here. But that'll take care of one Croxa for now. Could also play Lurus, replay a young Pyromancer for instance, which is good value, or we can escape a Croxa, and that's my entire turn. Probably still escape Croxa. Don't need Thoughtseize anymore. They can activate their castle as well to draw another Enforcer. Okay. Young Pyromancer over the top. So I'm okay attacking with Croxa and trading it. Now I think I do play Lurus Pyromancer and then replay Croxa for 3 damage. And then next turn I can replay Croxa again. And if they're empty handed they're just dead. Because we can both play it and escape it. Soaring Thought Thief. Not gonna be able to mill us out. So I think that leaves them dead on board. Escape, and doesn't matter too much what we get rid of here. All right, sweet. So yeah, rogues fueling our graveyard, not a bad thing in the matchup. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Lead with Inquisition, and then we know whether or not it's safe to play the Paramancer. All right, opponent on a Death and Taxes style deck. So Thalia is pretty annoying. So that's probably the pick. And then the end of course is clear for a young Paramancer. Hushbringer actually a combo with Croxa as we get to keep Croxa in play right away. So that could be fun. And then next turn we'll Thought Season have another look. Right, fatal push is good too. Executioner, I guess, is more annoying than Taranika. And then, don't really need to play looting. Yeah, we'll just pass. 
I might kill the Tithe Taker for two mana here. But at least now the afterlife token couldn't attack. Thirsts. If we have one more mana, we can play with Kicker to take out Taranika. Still don't know if I want to cast a looting, since again my hand's good, so I can just put Lurse in hand maybe. Could also tank with the tokens if they block, enable revolts, and kill Taranika. Which seems fine. Maybe only attack with one, so I can also do the Fatal Push trick on defense. Although it's still more mana efficient to put Lurse in hand. Could also double block and then Lurus gets back my Pyromancer. Yeah, double block isn't bad here. Could get punished by like a Sigrid. And that worked. Hushbringer. So if we find a Croxa, we're gonna be happy. And Giant Killer. Okay. So can play Lurus, maybe kill the Giant Killer using Fatal Push or Thirsts. Could also wait to get the Pyromancer and play Thirsts. Although I imagine Giant Killer is worth killing long term as well. Yeah, let's uh, use a Fatal Push and keep Thirst for larger creatures, potentially. If they have an answer for Lurus, then we could be in trouble. Thalia's not bad. Blocks our lifelink are on the ground. So probably fine to kill that. Attack for four. Now castle's still a pretty good one to play out. But I'll keep it in hand for now since we might end up discarding it to looting if we desperately need to dig for something. We'll start here. Croxa will stay in play, so that's perfect here. And our opponent flooded out a bit in the end, but that's also the advantage of looting, letting you discard lands in the late game. Alright, so we got to see our Rakdos midrange deck in action, and this is definitely a playstyle I personally enjoy. Having plenty of interaction, discard spells, removal means that no single matchup feels unwinnable, as long as you draw the right cards. So definitely a very rewarding playstyle, as you'll get a lot of decisions throughout the game. So usually it feels like you've got some sort of agency over how the game's gonna play out. And uh, yeah, that's definitely something I enjoy in Magic. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.